Hey guys, Jared Trunks 21 here. So, uh, this would actually be the third video that I've done today on Sunday, but in reality, it's the second one you guys are gonna see because I don't like the first one. Um, so I wanted to tell you guys, uh, the last one was the 12 pet peeves, which, you know, pet peeves, I, I tolerate them and they kind of get on my nerves, but they don't set me into a not a blind rage, but they don't make me, when I get in my car, say, that guy's a jackass. And I thought I'd give you guys my top ten pissing, pissed off facts. I don't know. These are the ten things that piss me off the most. Now, these come from both of uh, my prior experiences as a normal person... Well, I still am normal. Um, the 10 things that piss me off, whether they be from a different stage in my life, uh, my explorer time, my time as a police explorer, uh, or my time on YouTube. Um, there are about 10 of them, there's some more, but, uh, these are the big 10 that I see a lot of, and I hear a lot of. Give me one second, guys, I'm just trying to flip the TV around so I can actually have something in the background to look at. Um, but we'll kind of jump into this one, number one. Number one is always going to be the same. It's just cop haters, you know? I can understand you not liking cops, you know, I come from that part of them. What you guys may not know is, back in the day, I actually was one of them. I hated cops. I, I hated them with a white hot passion. There were multiple reasons why I hated them. Um, to kind of run down, you know, uh, I went to a small country school, and let me know that. I went to a small country school in Indiana called Clinton Central. Uh, it was the basis of one of the vacation vlogs that got deleted thanks to iCloud, which is annoying as hell. Um, but I'll try to get you guys stuff for that later. Um, it The school did not like me. I went there, you know, I'm like two, three years younger than my sister. And my sister and me, when we were younger, and now are totally different. We're two sides of the same coin. Back in the day, I was the tail side. I was the side you didn't want to look at because I was the bad person. Um, I didn't listen to direction. I didn't do well in school. I didn't like school. There's there's reasons for that. that old, those will come out later. And my sister was the opposite. She loved school. She was straight A. Perfect. The school loved her. They could market her. All of my teachers, almost all of my teachers, were hers. And they would always start with, We had your sister a couple years ago. She was so perfect. Can we expect the same from you? And I'm thinking to myself, How can I make this teacher's life a living hell? The few teachers that I had that I did not share with her were great. I loved them. And some of the teachers I did share with her, I loved. Because they treated me different. They treated me like a human. They didn't treat me like I was my sister. Or expect me to be my sister. But the staff of the elementary school, the administrative staff, the principal and the assistant principal, had it out for me. Before I even went there, they put my sister on the wrong bus to go to the babysitter. But instead of going to the babysitter, they sent her home when no one was home. This was the middle of winter in Indiana. Don't need to tell you how bad that is. She was in kindergarten. Maybe first grade, I don't know. Anyways, the thing is, Dad got a little pissed when he found out. He went down there to the school and made the principal, who was at the time the assistant principal, pick my sister up in his personal car and drive her to daycare. And threatened to have them all removed. Um, after that, they had a grudge. They set their sights on me because they could never get a hold of my sister. She was too perfect. Me, I was the target. I was deemed a bully at 
by the time I think I was in first grade, I was deemed a bully. I weighed 15 pounds in a school where the first graders weighed 45 and I was supposedly choking them out, hitting them with plastic lunch pails, busting their faces open. The school did not like me. And due to this, they set the D.A.R.E. officer on me every time I turned around. The D.A.R.E. officer was a Cumberland County or Clinton. Clinton County Sheriff. Every time I turned around, he was Clinton County Sheriff. He was just a total jackass to me. And that led me to hate cops. That and the fact that being my dad was Comcast, I saw that he was getting... There were times where we would get stopped and they would recognize him and they would let him off with a warning. They would not do anything to him when they should have given him a ticket because he worked for Comcast. And it, it upset me that someone was getting better treatment than they deserved. I don't like that. I still don't. So, if you're a cop hater, I understand where you're coming from. You don't like cops. But... I don't know how to change our views on them. I hated cops. And now I, I feel a hundred times safe with them around. I love them to death. And it's all because I came down here and I met one great cop. Gary Scarce. Shouldn't say his name on camera, but he was my criminal justice teacher. And I will have a video of him at some point. So you guys can see what he's like. Because he is amazing. I, like, I love him to death. But, guys, that's pet beef. That, that pisses me off. People who just hate cops, and they don't have a good reason. They just say, I hate cops. I hate cops. Cops are evil, blah, 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 blah. All cops are bash, blah, 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 blah. It's annoying. It really is. Number two, people who just randomly go, people who go and say you're a racist for something. Look. That pisses me off. Here's the thing. I've been accused of being racist quite a bit. All because there's different reasons. Have I ever done anything that is blatantly racist? No. Never. I don't do it. But I have been accused of it numerous times. The biggest one that I remember, I was accused of being racist because I had sat down at my desk and refused to get up. I sat down in my desk to look. To learn and the guy wanted my desk because it was apparently next to a girl he liked and I refused to get up he called me a racist and threatened to kick my ass not a racist guys if anything I'm a misanthrope or however you pronounce it, it means I hate everyone which is partially true like 99% of the people I hate number three I hate anyone who just bases all of their opinions on their political on their political side of you. Oh, I'm a Republican. I believe all Mexicans are bad. I don't believe government programs should be created. I don't think anyone needs welfare. I'm a Democrat. I think everyone deserves welfare. I think the minimum wage should be a hundred dollars. <laughs> I think college should be for free. Look, I don't have either political party. I am neutral. And as I've said in the past, I don't want to make this political. But here's some facts on either of those. For one, not all Mexicans are bad. My best friend Brady is... I do believe he's part Hispanic. I don't know. We never got into that. He acts Hispanic. He is Hispanic. See, now that's blatantly really racist. And, uh... If it was anyone else, I wouldn't say that, but me and Brady kind of understand each other. We've been best friends since 8th grade, so if you guys want to hate at me for that, go ahead. I don't give a shit. Oh, now for the welfare side of things. My dad is technically on government assistance. Well, not technically, he is. He is on disability. You know why? Vertigo. He cannot get above three feet. There are days he cannot get out of the chair. And, you know, sometimes he bullshits me and my mom about not wanting to do stuff. So he's like, oh, I got a busy spell. And there are days where we can tell the difference. For instance, do you guys know what it's like to be 10, 13 years old? You still see your dad as 
you know, the guy who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Andre the Giant, knocked him out in one punch, and seeing him fall out of his riding lawnmower, unable to get up. I know what that feels like. Because I saw it. Government assistance is good for those who need it. People who abuse the system are trash and slime. They piss me off. But people do need these programs. Now, as for the Democratic side, everyone should get government assistance. People, th This person over here needs government assistance. No, they don't. You're a single mother. You don't need government assistance. Go out and get a job. I understand you need food stamps. My sister uses used food stamps for my niece. I'm all for it. I'm all for some. In moderation. Don't go giving everyone food stamps. Don't go giving everyone disability. Don't go giving everyone. You know what? Someone said I should get disability because I have bipolar. Because I have autism. And before you guys start spouting off that because of my autism I shouldn't be held accountable for things I do. FYI, I have high-functioning autism. I have grown to adapt. I know the difference between right and wrong, and I know how to speak and how to act. Do I still say stuff that is inappropriate? Hell yes. Because I don't like the candy coat shit for you candy asses. Next. Here's the big thing you guys need to realize. Government assistance is necessary. Now, for those of you who think raising the minimum wage is good, here's some com here's some arguments for this. Minimum wage jobs are meant for basic. They are meant for high schoolers to have a job so they can get some money to go date to go on dates. They are not meant for you to live on. Is it bad that we have people that are 45 years old trying to make a living on minimum wage? Yes. The reason why? Because people put the jobs in other countries. That's bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say it. that's bad. Whatever. I get it. It's sad and it's depressing. Will minimum wage help you? No. Raising it will not do anything. The issue is the cost of living. You raise the minimum wage. Let's say you want McDonald's to pay you $10 an hour. Well, guess what? That quarter pounder is now gonna go up probably two, three bucks so McDonald's can make their money. You're, you want $10 to work at Walmart? Damn, now your milk ain't gonna cost $2.30 a gallon. It's gonna cost $7. They are businesses. They will make their money somehow. Yeah, we can give you $10 an hour. Now most of your money's gonna go to paying for the groceries. You. The issue is the lowering of cost of living. Bernie Sanders. I love Bernie. He had some great ideas. But he lost me when he wanted minimum wage and everyone jumped on board. Raising minimum wage doesn't help anything. Your cost of living needs to go down, not your minimum wage up. Now, on to the other arguments for each side. Honestly, I don't care for any political party. I am in between. I follow George Washington's belief on not having a political party. I don't. I didn't vote for a political party. I voted for a person who took both of their ideas and put them into a good purse. And put them into a good thing. I was hoping, with this election being Trump and Hillary, people would look at the non-party or the third-party candidates, at least, and say, Hey, these guys have good ideas. No, you all decided to waste your time and vote for idiots. Do I think Trump is a bad guy? No. Do I think Hillary is a bad guy? Yes. Only because I know a little bit more about Hillary's background than I do Trump. Do I think Trump's done some stupid shit in the past? Yes. There's your political argument. That was uh, angry thing number three. Fourth thing that pisses me off, and this comes from my policing background, my explorer background. People who stand in doorways. People who just block the doorway and make me sit there and wait for them to finish their conversation or make me wait in the doorway. I'm trying to get out of that doorway, get off of that stairwell as fast as possible. And 
It's just me. It pisses me off that people do that. They block stuff, and it, it annoys the crap out of me. And I have blown up on people for doing it in the past. Angry thing number five. The thing that pisses me off the most with my Explorer training is something I've seen all sorts of cops say. People who say, hey, if you don't behave, that cop's going to take you away. No. As an Explorer, I, I don't have powers of arrest, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I would never do that. Your kid needs to learn to love cops. They need to love us. Because, let's say they get kidnapped and they're 13 states away, and they finally get free, and they are they have to choose. Die out in the elements, or, you know, God forbid, stay with whoever abducted them, or run to the police. If they've been trained their whole life to be afraid of the cops, do you know how bad that's going to be for them? They're not going to go to the cops. They're going to be in a worse situation. Teach your kids to love cops. I'm teaching my niece that now. Sixth thing that pisses me off. People who get the wrong conception on what it means to be from the North. People... I've had it where people think that just because I'm from the North, living in the South, that I'm superior. Or that they think that I act better than I should. Or I I should act better than I do. No. I'm from Indiana. It's pretty much a southern state that's just magically North. I mean, I'm no different than anyone else. Number seven is... Anyone who bullies the other person, you know, there's never a good reason for bullying. And I've already went into how I feel about bullying, and this is going to be like a 20-minute video probably. So, just don't bully people. It pisses me off. Number eight is elitist. Anyone who acts better than others. And while sometimes I act that way, I, I try not to. It, it is annoying when someone who has a little bit more money than you or has more money than you comes over and they're like, Oh yeah, I just drove up in my Ferrari. What are you driving? Dodge Dart. Oh, my poor dumb uncle drove that yet. And your poor dumb uncle sounds like he has good money management. Number nine. Number nine is just people who... Pass stuff off as the real deal. You know, people who say, oh yeah, this this shirt is 100% legit. It, it, it went, all the money from this shirt goes to Wounded Warrior Project. Goes to Wounded Veterans. Goes to the dogs in the shelter. Show me your profits. They're just like, oh, we don't have those. Pisses me off. And this stems from people who prey on groups that don't deserve it. People who prey on the veterans. Who prey on the elderly. Pisses me off. And number 10. And probably the one that's the most lighthearted. People who don't respect beard. No. Nah. But in reality, number 10 is just... It's just people who don't know how to drive. I think we've all been there. We've been behind someone who doesn't know how to drive. They, they drive recklessly or they don't drive the speed limit. Now, I'll admit, I do drive more cautiously than I should. I got in an accident a while back. And I'm still very cautious. But I at least adhere to the to the road, to the driving road regulations in my state. So those are my 10 things that just piss me off. As a, uh, as a former explorer, as, you know, uh, just as a person in general. Oh, and YouTube, and stupid YouTube questions. You know, you get asked stupid things from people who want to start a channel. How much money can I make on YouTube? 
I actually answered this one recently, after answering so many by, about people asking how much money can they make if they meet this amount of requirements, if they meet this amount, or if they have this amount, this amount, this amount. Here's the question you should be asking. Here's what my answer to that question was. How much money can I make from YouTube? None. Because with that attitude, you will not get subscribers. You will not get followers. You will not get a fan base. Because you only want money. Do I joke that I want sponsors and money for my channel? Yeah. Reasoning is, I... Uh, hey, if I get... A sponsor, you know, if I if Crunchyroll magically sponsors a video, mag magically sponsors the channel, that seven bucks I can take out, I can redirect towards the channel. Maybe I can actually pay a moderator. I don't know. The thing is, guys, don't ask how much money you can make from YouTube. Ask if you can make a difference from it. You know... As much as I love making the Fallout content, the reason I got into vlogs is because I can share stuff that I have knowledge on and my experiences. And if they can make a difference and help people, that's the goal for me. That's why I want to be a cop. That's why I want to be a law enforcement officer. That's why I did three years as a police explorer. Why I continue to, why I'm still an aide currently is because I want to help people. So, if you guys, if you guys start a channel, just make sure you're doing something that helps. That's what the current charity is all about. Its link is at the top of the description. Please donate. Because, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever been around Special Olympics athletes. They're some of the best people in the world. You know. So, please do donate. And, uh... Of course, remember this. YouTube in and of itself is a annoying platform. You know, a couple of months ago I was getting four or five views on every video. Now I'm getting like maybe one if I'm lucky. And that one view is probably me. So... Please do share the videos, check them out, and if you guys don't want to miss a video, hit the bell notification button, subscribe to the channel, and also check out the Twitter. I always send out tweets when the video goes live, in case the bell and the subscription doesn't work, and I always post about what is on, what I'm uploading, what I'm currently doing. So, uh, yeah, go check out the Twitter at JRChunks21. Link down in the description. See you guys next time.